there was a sustained um, effort, an attempt to politically interfere with my discretion. She approached me in the House of Commons to inform me that my staff was speaking to her staff, which I think is entirely appropriate. What we need to do is get to the truth, and that's what a public inquiry will do. He stands accused of political interference in a criminal case. There is a process, both at the Justice Committee and indeed uh, at the Ethics Commissioner, uh, that will uh, make a determination on uh, what actually happened here. So, as you heard, various people sticking to their interpretation of what happened there. And the opposition has more questions. So, what is next in the SNC-Lavalin controversy? And how do people across the country feel? We'll put some of your questions to the Ad Issue panel. Chantal Labert is in Montreal. Andrew Coyne in Toronto. And Paul Wells also in Toronto. So, we've had a little more than 24 hours since uh, the testimony yesterday. There have been new developments, but, but now that we had a little bit of chance to kind of sit back and listen and watch, I want to get a sense of how you feel things are playing out tonight. And uh, Paul, let's begin with you. Well, last night, um, I'm told on social media, it was uh, possible to read all kinds of people saying, well, that's it, the Liberal Party's going to fall apart, they're going to fall on, on Justin Trudeau, it's uh, uh, open warfare. Um, that hasn't happened. The liberal antibodies in the early going are kicking in the way they normally do. Partisans going to partisan. And in an election year, uh, they will be quick to remind themselves that the alternative to Justin Trudeau is not Christopher Freeland or some imaginary, even better liberal leader. It's uh, Andrew Scheer. And they really don't like Andrew Scheer. They figure he, they, they have convinced themselves that he's dangerous for the country. So, uh, so what are they going to do in response? I'm given to understand they're going to... Uh, now attack Jody Wilson-Raybould's credi credibility. That is not what I would advise them to do. I expect that uh, it'll be harder than they think it will be. And, uh, and it, will, um, it, it will serve up the spectacle of liberals attacking liberals that they had uh, so far spent 36 hours avoiding. Chantal? I also think that, uh, and I did see the same thing on social media and in emails, uh, the liberal reflex kicking up. Uh, someone asked, do you really, do you think, or don't you think there will be a putsch and they will replace uh, Justin Trudeau? And uh, I see no evidence of that happening. But I still think many Canadians, including uh, a lot of people who voted liberal in 2015, expect more from the prime minister. Uh, than what they've been seeing so far, snippets here and there uh, as he's doing other things. Uh, and his, his former principal secretary today is asked and will be testifying in front of the Justice Committee. And that's all fine. But at the end of the day, uh, to respond to a sitting or a former sitting minister, I think a lot of people want to hear Justin Trudeau and not just uh, saying there's nothing to this and there's a process in place. Andrew, last night on Ad Issue and uh, also in your opinion piece, you're very strong on the fact that, uh, that you felt Wilson Rabel's testimony uh, spoke to a, a real problem, a, a, a crisis for the government. Your thoughts tonight? Well, and, and I wasn't the only one. I guess that's the point. Is she has clearly moved the needle on this. People who might previously have been more sympathetic to the government's line in this or more skeptical of her uh, complaints. Uh, I think we're, if you look at many of the columnists, for example, people moved off that position to finding her very credible, and partly because of her own demeanor, her own dignity, but also because of the documentation that she brought to the table as well. So it is not going to be sufficient. It is clearly not sufficient for the Prime Minister to continue with the line he's taken all the way along this of just basically blanket denials or half denials or non-denial denials that don't actually get at the nub of this. Uh, it's obviously uh, uh, too, way too soon to be talking about the Prime Minister resigning or being a, a coup within the party, but it's also uh, way too late for them to be coming forward much for the, further than they have and having much more transparency. And as I said before, we need to hear all of the principal players in this, all the main people that were named in Ms. Wilson-Raybould's testimony need to be make their own testimony. So it's great to see Jerry Butts coming forward. I think we need to hear from all of them. Now, Andrew Scheer, the opposition leader, last night said that uh, the Prime Minister should resign. Today, he upped the ante by uh, sending a letter to the RCMP and saying that there ought to be a, a criminal investigation. Uh, Andrew, is that reasonable or does that go too far, do you think? It's not unreasonable in itself. There, it is not entirely clear, uh, to my session anyway, to the degree I've you know, talked to lawyers and, and read other lawyers, 
this, it's, it's unlikely to rise to the level of obstruction of justice, but it's not entirely clear that it doesn't. So my own view would be that is something that the RCMP can figure out well enough on their own. Uh, I don't think they necessarily need advice uh, from the leader of the opposition or anybody else. So that's mostly a stunt uh, on Andrew Scheer's part, as was the, the demand for the prime minister to resign today. I mean, we need to hear from all sides on this. Ms. Wilson-Raybould made a very compelling testimony, but th the people that she accused deserve their day in court, their chance to rebut that, but they got to step forward. Uh, but, uh, and the RCMP will do what they're going to do, and, and we'll just have to see. Well, I, I note uh, that the, neither of the main opposition parties is calling for an election to allow Canadians to pass judgment on everything that they, is being put to them. They could, uh, and, and I suspect the only way that there will be closure on this is uh, by a Justin Trudeau restoring his moral authority by winning another mandate or someone else assuming power. And I suspect the reason that uh, no one is calling for that and instead calling for the impossible to obtain prime ministerial resignation is because neither of the opposition party is game to go in an election between now and the end of April. So we put the call out yesterday for people to uh, tell us if they have questions and we got an unusual number of responses and, and among those responses a lot of thoughtful questions. Uh, we're going to play some of those now and let's start with what Kevin White asked. Given the prospect of SNC-Lavalin being banned from bidding on government contracts and potentially failing or moving overseas, realistically, had any other political party been in power, would they have done things any differently? So, Paul, the curtain here was raised. We got to, uh, to hear about interactions between cabinet ministers and senior staff that maybe we don't always hear. And so a lot of people are wondering, maybe this always happens and the only difference is we're getting to hear about it in this one particular case. So I spent a, a large part of the day trying to decide whether it is naive of me to think that it should have been possible while Justin Trudeau was sending staffers in waves to tell Jody Wilson-Raybould this was about jobs, this was about uh, economic and political reality, that maybe somebody could have told Canadians that. Because the only glimpse that Canadians had that this was coming down the pike was one paragraph on page 202 of last spring's federal budget. And what it said is, we're going to get tougher on corporate wrongdoers, we're going to increase their accountability, not we are going to serve up uh, a, a last-minute change to the criminal code, code that SNC-Lavalin has spent millions of dollars begging us to implement. Uh, if, uh, if they were so all-fired realistic about things, they forgot to tell Canadians. And that's, that's, that's the thing that I'm getting angrier about as the days go on. Chantal, are you getting angry? <laughs> I don't uh, do the angry thing. <laughs> it, it gets in the way of, of thinking, I find. Uh, but uh, I think any responsible government of any uh, party would have uh, tried to see whether it could mitigate damage to a major employer that uh, is responsible for 9,000 jobs across the country, only half of them in Quebec, for the record. I don't know that they would have proceeded the same way. Paul is quite right. That process was convoluted. Uh, but the opposition parties could also have rung alarm bells. It was not totally hidden. And uh, I don't think uh, either the Conservatives or the NDP really wanted to have a fight over, with the Liberals over SNC-Lavalin. This is a, a result of circumstances and personalities more so than the opposition looking for evidence of something happening with SNC-Lavalin that they wanted to fight over. What I hope will come out of this is that this will reinforce what ought to have been a, a pretty solid taboo, that you don't go messing with the independence of an attorney general or with the prosecutorial discretion of independent prosecutors. That's why the director of prosecutions, public prosecutions was put into law, was to be independent. Uh, so to the extent anybody is contemplating that, I hope that this episode will uh, stop them from doing so. But look, the premise that this was going to lead to the collapse of SNC, I think should be, SNC Lavalin should be viewed with a great deal of skepticism. I think this had much more to do with increasing its bargaining position vis-a-vis -vis the prosecutors, had much more to do with where the headquarters was going to be located, these kinds of political questions and not these kind of apocalyptic scenarios where the whole, comp the whole company goes under. I want to move on to uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould because we've got a lot of questions about her, her, her strategies, her motives. Uh, here's a question from Alex Thompson. With all that Jody Wilson-Raybould has gone through up until this point, including her seeming loss of confidence with the PM, why has she not resigned as a member of the Liberal caucus? 
who wants to answer that? Andrew? Why should she? Uh, that's not, you, you don't have to be uh, a, a paid up believer in the Prime Minister's leadership and in the particular conduct of the people around him to be a member of the Liberal Party or she was elected as a Liberal. I would say that's much more to do with what her uh, riding association and what her electors believe than whether or not she's on the same page as the Prime Minister on any given issue. So Paul, another version of that question that we saw a lot of from viewers was if Jody Wilson-Raybould had not been demoted or you know her cabinet uh, position hadn't changed uh, maybe this never would have become public so should we look at this with any kind of cynicism in terms of her motive I don't I don't think you need Jody Wilson Raybould to be the purest hero in the history of Canadian politics to believe that she asked uh, some uh, serious questions and raised some important information last night um, you know, so the question is, why didn't she quit immediately when she felt the pressure? Uh, it seems to me that she stayed in the job from the, from the last part of December to the first part of January because she had reason to believe she'd won the argument. She, they had come at her and come at her and come at her and come at her and said, you've got to do this. And she said no. And then she went home for Christmas. It wasn't until the first week in January when, when, when they told her that she was, she was moving. Why did she not quit during those 15 days? Well, because it was the holidays. Let's finish with this, maybe 30 seconds from each of you, beginning with you, Paul. What should the Liberals do? What can the Liberals do to repair the damage, especially over the next week or so? Um, I, I would advise them against uh, further rounds of infighting. Uh, they, the, the, the former AG made um, <coughs> allegations about a dozen people. If they did not hold those meetings, if they were not uh, in those rooms, then they should say so. And if they have records that suggest that they didn't, they spoke in a different tone or with different content, then, then, then they're free to contest that. But it sounds like she's got them dead to rights. And uh, I, I would encourage this government and this prime minister to look inside. Why were you so disingenuous for so long about what was plainly such a major issue for you and everybody working for you? Why can't you tell Canadians what you're doing in there? Andrew? Uh, I agree that the only thing that's going to save them, if it's, if it's going to save them, is transparency. There's, there's no, there's no p percentages anymore in the stonewalling strategy that hasn't worked for them. It's not going to work for them. I think there's going to be some officials in that government who, are, who should be polishing up their resumes. Uh, whether that's going to include the prime minister will be a political decision for the party. Probably not. But I think there may be some other people who are going to be, going to be departing. And Chantal, last word to you. I expect that we're going to hear a repeat of uh, the clerk's uh, initial testimony. I was struck today by the fact that uh, in the House, no one questioned the, the, the bare facts. Uh, everyone is trying to set their sights on interpretation. So I'm not so sure that you can mount a, a very strong defense uh, that goes beyond do you believe her or do you find the prime minister more credible. But I do think they need to put the prime minister in a setting maybe not the committee, where he does answer more fully uh, the questions that are being put to him and in a way that shows something beyond the code words. It's been another incredible week and a story that keeps on surprising us. Thanks to uh, all of you. And before we go, be sure to subscribe to the Ad Issue podcast for extra content. This week, we're talking about those federal by-elections. Look for it on iTunes, any major podcast app, and on our website, cbcnews.ca slash the National.